Thank you to Red Cloud and Explore for inviting us to uh, present our company, Walbridge uh, Mining. Uh, uh, just, I'll be making some forward-looking statements, so I encourage you guys to read that on our website as well. Uh, Walbridge has always been known for its copper nickel PGM exploration in Sudbury, and it wasn't uh, till about uh, 2011, and the company decided to transition itself from being just a pure explorer to a cash flow generator with growth through exploration and uh, acquisitions. And uh, uh, we certainly uh, put the team together in order, in order to look for value creative assets. And uh, uh, since, since then, obviously, there's been quite a lot of success, which I'll uh, explain later. But the, um, the project that we picked up and the subject of my talk today and obviously subject of our valuation today is the Fenelon Gold that we purchased uh, about three years ago to the day almost. And uh, uh, we certainly, it, it's in Quebec, probably one of the best jurisdictions as far as uh, mining in Canada is concerned. Uh, we have a pretty robust exploration program this year. We'll be continuing uh, our exploration drilling this year for about 80,000 meters. Next year's planned uh, uh, program is about 120,000 meters. Uh, we have a fully funded program for this year and we have roughly, as of the end of September, we had about $15 million uh, cash. and. Uh, the project has, has obviously some fantastic grade in the in the upper areas when uh, where, where you know we called it the main gap was on. We had uh, some triple digits over several meters. We completed a bulk sample in order to understand the continuity of some of these high grade zones. We actually finished bulk sample uh, that started last year, first quarter of this year. It was about thirty three thousand. Uh, tons of 18 and a half grams a ton. Some of the stopes, these are bulk mining stopes. Some of the stopes uh, were about four or 5,000 tons of 38 grams a ton fully diluted. Uh, really the inflection point for us was late last year where we, uh, where we had a new discovery just about 300 meters south of the, the area that we concentrated our bulk sample and previous owners had done. And uh, that's, that's what we call the Area 51 the Tabasco discoveries. And uh, some of the some of the uh, results have been 227 meters of 1.46, uh, 11 meters of 17 grams, and uh, obviously the one that we just released this past uh, um, uh, Tuesday or Monday was 27 grams over 38 meters, and that's in the Tabasco. And we seem to 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 understand that this deposit, as it gets deeper from about 300 meters down, it's, uh, some of these zones starts to widen and also be more endowed in gold. We have uh, supportive major shareholders. Uh, Eric Sprott and uh, William Day Construction. This is our share structure. Uh, we trade on the TSX uh, with the ticker WM. Uh, as I mentioned, we have, uh, you know, we have about $15 million cash. Uh, ob uh, obviously, you can see that, uh, you know, when we purchased the Fenelon property, uh, our market cap was uh, about $5 million, and we purchased this property for $3.5 million. I don't know how we did it, but we did it. And, uh, and obviously, there's been uh, value accretion to the uh, to the shareholders. Uh, I believe we were at four and a half cent share at the time, about two hundred million dollars outstanding. Today, we're close to about five hundred million shares outstanding. But obviously, it's been uh, it's been uh, value accreted for our shareholders. Uh, we, as I mentioned, I joined Walbridge in 2011. That's where we decided to look at the uh, you know transition in the company and uh, typically most junior companies haven't been successful in trying to operate their own first project and uh, in order for us to go into other p companies and try to talk talk to them about their non-core assets we needed to assemble a pretty good team and also demonstrate that we can do it uh, so we looked internally it was uh, it was in 2014 and 15 where the junior companies had a hard time raising money we actually operated our uh, first project called broken hammer it was a copper nickel pgm and uh, not only did we generate some free cash flow, but actually gained the experience in order for us to be able to talk to other people about their non-core assets. So since then, obviously, we've had uh, we've had uh, assembled a pretty good team on the management side as well as our directors, and, uh, and and have been able to succeed. The assembled team that we had had a had a had a criteria for acquisition. The acquisition had to be in Canada, outside of British Columbia and the territories. It had to be high margin. And it had to be um, f less than five years to production. So, so it was a pretty tall order for a company that had a $5 million market cap or looking for something. But what we, one other factor that we were looking for is scalability. We knew we weren't going to find something that already had a couple of million ounces. But we just wanted to see if it, it, was, if it was scalable. So Fenelon Gold, uh, which was owned by Balmoral Resources at the time, it was their non-core asset. 
they were exploring on the Martinier project on the eastern side of Detour, on the Sunday Lake Deformation Zone. And they also had the Grasset property. So this was a pretty small at the time. It was a 40 ounces, 40,000 ounces, down to about 100 meters. And, uh, and, and really, it was underexplored. So we, just, we looked at it through the due diligence. We re realized that although it has 40,000 ounces, out of the 65 some thousand meters that was drilled in there, over 55,000 of it was actually within a box of about 100 by 150 down to about 150 meters. But wherever there was drill holes outside of that box, there was actually mineralization that had never been followed. It's a pretty underexplored belt altogether because uh, it's, you know, your typical Abbey TB belt, like in Timmins and Valdor or Cruan, a lot of people would have kicked the moss and be able to find gold. Here, you got about 20 to 30 meters of overburden. It wasn't really till the late 90s with the, with the geophysics that, uh, that uh, companies were, were, you know, were finding gold. In fact, a lot of them were looking for VMS type deposits because of the presence of Salve and the metogamy and um, they, they stumbled across gold. So, so, so it f fit all the, boxes we uh, we actually uh, immediately decided uh, to 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 a resource to do a resource update on it the original resource was something like 19 grams a ton in the top 100 meters uh, we realized that it wasn't really based on the proper proper procedures or the mining method um, mining thicknesses so our resource came about 13 grams a ton in that same area uh, we completed the pre-feasibility not because we wanted to do it, to put it in mining we wanted an independent review of seeing how this can be mined but even then, we realized our board and the management realized that the best for us is to go underground, take a look at, you know, the continuity of some of these grades, some of these holes. Maybe we had some seven meters of 260 grams, seven meters of 140, three meters of 340. You know, we didn't want to have the same bad experience as some of these high-grade veins that don't necessarily show up when they go underground. So we did this bulk sample for that reason, uh, and and all around the, all along till about the end of last year. Really, everybody, including ourselves, we thought that there was really this main gabbro zone that, uh, that, that was really responsible. And this is this gabbro zone. I don't know if you can see my uh, coin there. This might be better. OK. So there was this gabbro zone that everybody had concentrated on. And everybody was basically looking at continuation of these, as well as ourselves, till the end of 2018. And uh, it wasn't really. It wasn't really until the, uh, the late 2018, I remember it was December 22nd, we were trying to find, find the extents of these main gabbro zones, like the, the, the pepper names that we had as Chipotle, Naga Viper, within the gabbro area. And in fact, we had a hole called Hole 51 that was testing the extent of these down to about 600 meters to the Tabasco zone. But uh, in the previous slide, we knew that there, when we purchased the property, we looked at a lot of the mag uh, information. There was really a few mag low areas that we wanted to test. We, had a, we still have about a dozen targets on the property. This area south of the main Gabra zone was really the, one of the targets that we had. Our guys on December 22nd said there's about 30 meters left to the end of the hall. Uh, we'd like to not set up on another hole because of the Christmas holidays. We'd like to extend that to test that target. And sure enough, that hole 51, 30 meters past the plant depth, hit visible gold. And we were actually in mineralization for over 200 meters in that hole. And that's the reason for naming that area called Area 51, because at the time we didn't know what it was, except for the fact that we realized that it still had the same high-grade nature of some of these areas. This, on the right-hand side, the zoomed, up, po zoomed out portion of the, the top 100 meters. We realized it had the same sort of a characteristics, these high-grade veins, but more importantly, it was actually surrounded by some of these stock work of mineralization. So we got the results, I believe it was February of this year, late February, we announced the results of that hole, which puts about 100 and some odd meters of 0.9 grams a ton. But within that, there were some high-grade zones in there. And uh, since March of this year, we've continuously added drills. We started with one, and then in April, two, and then we're now up to six drills running at the site, continuing not only to uh, do the exploration of this Area 51, but the way we drill, we actually go through the, the entire zone in the Area 51, as well as the Gabriel zones. So just some of the results that we had during the 
in the, in the upper area, in the main Gabro zone, some of these triple digits over several meters, but the Area 51 discovery, that's the first hole, which was about 105 meters or 0.9, but the second hole that we did was about 227 meters or 1.46. But within that, we still had 100 meters of 2.81, and within that, you had 11 meters of 16 grams a ton. So it gave us, gives us sort of an optionality of taking a look at this as far as a resource, whether it's gonna be a sort of a high-grade, small-type mining, uh, or, or large underground bulk mining similar to the types that they have at Young Davidson of Alamos, or perhaps even looking at it from an open pit point of view. And that was basically when we started our exploration, expanded our exploration program for 2019, which is, which is uh, roughly about 70 to 80,000 meters this year. So I was trying to tell you that the original owners, including ourselves up to the end of the last year, were really uh, concentrating in this box, this is a pre-wall bridge. So all of the drilling that you see was really concentrated in this area, but wherever they had drilled holes outside of that box, they, they seem to have intersected some mineralization but never really followed. So this is post-wall bridge since. In fact, most of this drilling in here has actually happened since April of this year where we've expanded the understanding and the extent of some of these shear zones within the sediments. And then we also identified that this main this, this Jeremy Pluton, which on the geological maps of the Quebec, we really didn't really show that it came to our property, but based on the drilling that we've done so far, we now understand that this Jeremy Pluton is actually the, 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 the source of some of, these, um, some of these veins, and these are these east veins that, that cross-cut those shear zones that are in the sediments and continue into the Jeremy Pluton. And, and it appears as though because of the fact that they dip, uh, they dip the Jeremy Pluton dips to the north, the, the um, Gabbro dips to the south, and both of these create these brittle environments where the veins open up, and that's where we see the concentration of the grays. This is, again, the long section of the pre-wall bridge. As I mentioned, all the drilling was focused in this uh, top 100 meters within a 100 by 100 meter block, but whatever they had drilled, like they had a 0.3 uh, meters of some 30 grams a ton or one and a half meters of 11 uh, sorry, 1.2 meters of uh, 15 grams a ton, but never really followed that. So next slide, this is basically what Walbridge has done so far. And our concentration is within this uh, roughly about a 900 meter strike length down to about 600 to 700 meters. And you can see some of the, some of the good results that we've had today. And this is actually that 38 meters of 27 grams a ton within this uh, around, roughly around 450 meters. And obviously it's 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 still underexplored. We've we have a lot we've had we have a lot of uh, areas that are untested, but it has the potential to grow east west as well as to depth. In Abbey TB, things don't stop at six or seven hundred meters, and obviously our job is to continue finding the um, uh, you know the potential for it this year. Uh, I think I'll go back. So so you can see in this slide, these are the sections we drill seventy five meter step outs this this year. Our eighty thousand meter uh, drill program this year is essentially going to find the size potential. No QP is going to give us a resource with these 75 or 80, 80 meter step outs. But the plan for us is to continue with these 75 meter step outs to be able to find the size potential of this down to about maybe 650, 700 meters this year. And next year's program of 120, 100 to 120,000 meters, hoping, we're hoping that it'll provide us with a uh, resource uh, potential of uh, greater than a million ounce. Uh, those sections that I mentioned, these are 75 meter sections. These are some of the typical sections that we have. I can't see this, uh, but, uh, but you can see that I was trying to tell you that we understand that roughly around the 300 meter depth, we seem to be getting a bit of a, a, a slight change in the dip of some of these shear zones in the sediments. And that getting closer to this Gabbro is as, and, and the Jeremy Pluton, and, uh, and it starts to thicken and be more endowed. Uh, in fact, you can see in here, in the upper areas, you don't, uh, you don't have, you know, you still have like 1.2 meters of 15 grams a ton or whatnot, but as it gets deeper, you get into the areas where you have 11 meters of five and a half or 11 meters of 5.75. And in the next section, you can see in the upper area, again, you got 1.2 of 15 grams. And then roughly around the area where it gets closer to the Jeremy Pluton and the gap where you start to thicken, and that's where you have these uh, higher grades with, uh, with, uh, with, the, um, with more endowed uh, areas. Additionally, we also, we also see that inside the Jeremy Pluton, uh, some of these east-west veins uh, cross-cutting the, the, the shear zones 
within the sediments at the depth, it starts to widen, widen the zones that, that provides us with that optionality of being able to mine. You know, we're talking about large underground bulk mining type of a scenario where you could be four to 6,000 ton a day of anywhere between four to seven, eight, seven grams a ton, you know, having, having that kind of a, you know, kind of a mining that they're doing at, at Agnico's um, gold desks or at the Young Davidson of Alamos. Uh, more importantly is we're drilling the holes from south to north and we're trying to understand the upper portions of these um, of, of, of these Area 51 zones. Uh, obviously it's too early for us to see whether this is open pitable or not. Uh, some, of the, some of the results to date uh, have shown that there is a potential for it. We've drilled uh, as of today perhaps about 55,000 meters this year. We've, uh, we're still waiting for over 30,000 meters of assay results. Uh, so, so we'll continue to update as the assay results come, but you can see anywhere you see in these in these sections and on the plan view on the log section, wherever you see visible gold, uh, uh, those are some of the ones that we're waiting for assay. What's interesting for us, and, and it's it's remarkable, is the fact that we're doing these 75 to 80 meter step outs, and more than three quarters of our holes intersect visible gold in various sections, and more almost all the holes hit mineralization even in these 75 to 80 meter step -ups. So, 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 so this is remarkable. Mentioned that we're drilling the, the holes from south to north, so, so we really didn't know what was going on at depth within the Jeremy Pluton, so we decided to extend one of our holes that were drilled last year, just following up on the Gabro zones. We extended that, that hole to see what, it, what goes on at depth within the Jeremy Pluton, and that's actually, it hit pretty significant uh, area, uh, with good mineralization, visible gold. So we know that now it's opened up a corridor of another 600 meters that we need to test for, um, for it within the Jeremy Pluton. So all of those drill holes that we're doing, we continue to do the step outs, to do the 75, 80 meter step outs to understand not only the near surface stuff, but also trying to figure out some of these uh, uh, east west uh, veins that I was talking to you about in here, whether they continue or not. So. Uh, I mentioned to you guys that Tabasco zone, and I think I'm going to go back just to just to show you what what I meant by Tabasco area. That's this shear zone in here, and that's just one of the ones that we've continued over over six to seven hundred meter in strike length at 75 meter step outs. We pretty well almost know when we're going to hit it. In fact, I do, I do get these quick logs every morning. And, you know, they expect that two days from now we're going to, based on the drilling meters, we're going to be hitting that. And sure enough, two days after, you get the, the explanation of the type of mineralization and the visible gold and the sulfides, you see that. So this, this long section that I was referring to is the long section of Tabasco. You can see in the upper areas, we're still waiting for a lot of assays. We see that at, at, in, the, in the upper areas, you still get these high grades, but into an, in a narrower uh, veins. But roughly around 300 meters, you can see that it's continuing to be wider and more endowed. And obviously, we're, you know, we, we haven't got the assays of these holes. This is the one that was released. These are also some significant uh, intervals of 10 to 20 meters uh, in hole 90 and 92. We are drilling the undercuts in here, and we continue to do these 75 80 meter step outs. Uh, please note the fact that it's still open to the east and to the west, and uh, you know we we're, we're continuing to drill these and trying to uh, trying to add uh, add the potential ounces in these in this zone. Uh, so our exploration strategy, as I mentioned, is in 2019. This 80,000 meter uh, plan is basically just going to provide us with the with the potential for a greater than a million ounce. And uh, also, we're looking at, as I mentioned, to demonstrate the open pit potential near surface. And uh, 2020, 120,000 meters, uh, we've already engaged the uh, QP. Uh, I, I believe that we're going to, you know, talk to the QP, not, not after you drilled your entire deposit, but, pre, you know, pre-hand. And um, our QP has, at the, has been at the site for, uh, you know, a couple of times, and he's been in touch with the team. Uh, and we're hoping that with the 30 to 40 meters spacing next year, we do the infill drilling within that 900 meter down to seven, six or 700 meters and come up with a meaningful resource. For us, a meaningful resource is not an inferred. We want it to be mostly in, in indicated. And we believe that it's going to be a greater than a million ounce uh, uh, underground resource. And then understanding what the initial open pit resource would be in the area 51. Uh, notwithstanding all of the exploration that we've done, we did complete the bulk sample last year. It was, uh, you know, 
we, we put all the infrastructure in place for that bulk sample, but the bulk sample mimicked a small operation of four to 500 ton a day. So, so we have, you know, we, we do have our water treatment facility, we have a shop, we have the offices, and about five kilometers from the, from the mine site, we do have an 80% camp. So, so we have applied for, and, and also the underground infrastructure that we put in down to 125 meters, but we're only allowed to take 35,000 tons. We've extended these zones down to another, another 100 meters. Uh, so the application that we put in for, for an operation is a four to 500 ton a day of perhaps 10 to 12 gram a ton range. What we know so far, it should sustain a couple of years of operation, uh, you know, with that, with that type of a scenario. And that hopefully provide us with that free cash flow through, you know, trying to uh, put towards the exploration and development of this larger project in Area 51 and the uh, Tabasco Deep. So Catalyst this year, as I mentioned, we've done over 55,000 meters this year, and we've only been able to release less, you know, uh, less than half of what is there. The lab had some issues. We also had some, some uh, difficulty growing, trying to get these samples. Obviously, the holes are six, 700 meters, and almost the entire hole has to be cut and bagged and sampled. So it took a, a bit of a time, but um, uh, we believe that we'd be able to come up with regular updates you know, every two to three weeks from now to the, uh, to the end of the next year based on the program that we have today. And, um, and also continue the permitting process for that 4 to 500 ton a day operation. Um, on the other hand, as I mentioned, we were known for copper nickel PGM uh, exploration in Sudbury. We do have our uh, properties in Sudbury. We're the third largest mining landholder in Sudbury, but we, we do understand that the gold and base metal investors are different. So we, we, we intend to, at, the, at one point, at the proper time, to bifurcate that. But I'm a believer that if you're going to uh, spin out something, you make sure that they don't come back and ask him for money. So like you're sending your kids, you know, and then coming back for half the rent every month. So, so we are looking for something like near-term to production asset to be added to that in order to be able to stand on its own. That's basically uh, what we're trying to do and hoping that we'll do that in the, sh the near-term. Uh, and that's it.